Well, just for a moment, dear friends, I want to say a word in defense of the Pharisees. Uh, Jesus is making a pretty strong case here that, that empty gestures are not worthy of our faith, and that's certainly true. I certainly piled on on Sunday on that point, talking, I hope, somewhat humorously at least about being grudging and doing good deeds and why would we grudgingly help people. And there is also something to be said for the idea that when we are in the presence of God, the things that we do to remind ourselves of the presence of God should not be quite as important to us or at least shouldn't have quite the same value. I mean, why would we keep reminding ourselves that someone is sitting right next to us when they're sitting right there? There's no point to it. At the same time, I want to suggest that we could very easily throw out the spiritual baby with the gestural bathwater. There is something to be said for some practices as a way of keeping us centered where we should be in our faith. I think the clergy and those who are in religious orders will testify that there is something about the rhythm of worship periodically that's really very important to us. Those of us for whom anxiety and worry and fretting are a full contact sport could easily skip over that whole even acknowledgement of the presence of God and go directly into whatever the worries are for the day, rather than beginning with stillness. How important is it to so many of us who have days that are full of tasks to begin with some time in quiet, some time where time is not as important because it is time in the presence of God who is timeless. So there is something about that rhythm, that routine that is so important in keeping the rhythm of our souls where it is supposed to be. The same can be said about prayer. There is a prayer that some of us are old enough to have remembered being taught as being called the prayer for all sorts and conditions of men. It's been changed now. We pray for everybody, not just anybody of one gender. But I remember reading a commentary on that prayer once that said it was so important because it had taught generations of Anglicans the full range of things they should be praying for. How often is that true for us in our prayer life as we are engaged with God in that way? Have you ever had that experience where something comes to your mind you hadn't even thought about that you should be praying for? Someone, some condition, some event something else going on in the world. There's something about the practice of prayer that, that builds us spiritually. And so to be regular in that practice, even though it may look like one of the things that the Pharisees were saying, well, why don't people do? And Jesus appears to be saying, well, if you're in the presence of God, don't worry about, is nonetheless really valuable to us. So by all means, discard empty gestures. By all means, discard those things that we do simply out of habit, and we don't even really remember why we do them anymore. At the same time, hold on to the things that truly do feed you spiritually, that feed us spiritually, even if they appear to be the routine, even if they appear to be something that we just continue to do. Well, in some cases, there's a good reason for that. I think if we will hold on to those things that feed us, those things that nourish us, that, that, that form us spiritually, we will only be more aware of being in the presence of God and better able to be doers of the Word, as James puts it in the letter. Because now we'll know why we're doing those things. We'll have a better and clearer sense of who we are as doers of the word. Amen.